2 and we're modifying a cheap milling machine vise to make it a little easier to maintain and get a bit better performance out of it. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. It's about 0.2 under 8 millimetres and that's okay. So what I need to do now is just bring the rest to that size. The next thing I want to do is just put a lead on the front so the die will go on easier. I fitted my wheel on the back of the headstock. A bit more oil in there. I haven't got to worry about going right up to the face because there is a washer that will fit on there. This black washer goes on there. So that takes a couple of mil up on that thread. Okay, the next job is to drill a three millimeter hole through. about 30 millimeters deep so on there so when I part this off it'll hit the hole. The next job is to turn the diameter down I've replaced my center in the end to support it and I need to turn this down to about 20 millimeters <laughs> Twenty point oh five. So that will do. Change to my parting off tool. I put my parting off tool in the tool post. Adjusted the height to zero, so it's on centre line. Now I'm just checking that the parting off tool is square to the chuck, which it seems to be. Bring it until it's square. Lock it up. Position the tool. Lock the saddle. Now I'm going to slow the speed down. Now the diameter's reduced, I can speed it up a bit. What I've done so far, I've put the collet holder in the headstock, the R20 collet, and I've held the part in the end. And all I want to do is drill a 5mm hole in the end and tap that 6mm. <laughs> Seven millimeters deep. That should be okay. Now I'll put six millimeter thread in there. 
I've set up my tap, 6mm by 1 tap, tap holder. This is my guide into the tailstock. And on the end of the guide, it's just a spring loaded pointed plunger and it goes into the back of the tap and put some pressure on there. It just guides the back of the tap so you know you've got the tap or square to the hole. And as I turn the headstock, the spring loaded plunger will keep on the back of the tap. Now that's stopped, so I'm obviously at the bottom of the hole. I'll change now for the second tap. Now the bottoming tap. Clear out any bits. Slippery snipple fitted. Now all I need to do is just put a chamfer on the corner of this. what we have so far. Now all I need to do is mill hexagon on the end and that's the new nut. I've temporarily reassembled the vise. This is the nut we're making in the end. I fitted a ER32 collet block which is a hexagon block so I can machine a hexagon on the end to form the nut. I've left the grease nipple fitted, so what I need to do is come down and touch the block and then move one and a half mil down, machine a flat, rotate the block and keep doing that until I form the hexagon. Now I've just touched the top of the hexagon, I've zeroed my tool position. I've moved in so the tool covers the full width of that diameter. So now I need to go down a mil and a half. So I'll go down half a mil. I'm not sure how well this collet will hold the nuts being a thread. thing to do is turn the block round one, bring it back so that the nut here is on the face of the jaw. I can lock that up and I know the position is right.
the bolt. Just done the hexagon. It's a 17 mil hexagon on the end. That's the original washer and at the bottom there you can see the end of the main nut. So the washer goes on and this new bolt goes through. Just nip that up. So it's holding the nut in position and now it gives me a grease nipple which is well clear of the face. Okay, I'll just put some light down the end. You can see the nut in the middle. If I pump some grease in, there we go. You can see the grease has just come through into the main nut. So that's all working okay. So now I want to do the casting on the end of the screw. If I drill the hole in, machine the flat on and drill the hole in, you can see there the grease nipple will come straight through and, and touch the shaft. But if I do it down here, mill the flat and drill the hole, the grease nipple would have full thread and wouldn't touch the shaft. So that's what I plan to do. Just about here, drill a hole straight in for the grease nipple. Fitted the casting into the milling machine vise and what I want to do is just mill a flat on there to give me a start. That's the, the grease nipple that will go in. So first I'll just machine a flat so I know I've got a flat face to work to. change to a centre drill and then drill a 5mm hole to tap 6mm. Now I should drill down 6mm where I know it's going to break into the side of the hole to take it easy. And that's 6mm deep. Not broke into the hole yet, so I can go a bit deeper. Yeah, that's gone through now. See there, it's just come through into the main body, in the corner, just where I want it on the edge. That's done. So we've added a grease nipple here to lubricate this part here and a grease nipple which you can get at from underneath to lubricate the main thread. If you look under there in the mirror you can see the, the grease nipple for the main screw and the other one is just on the top. So I can get a grease gun under here to grease that and grease the top one without having to take the vice off the milling machine. So the grease nipples, they cost £12, but that was a set of 130 grease nipples for £12. Uh, different sizes. This was off eBay. These are all angled in the bottom. 45 degree. And the top ones are all straight. Uh, they're a mixture of... Uh, these are all 
metric and then there's some UNF I think they are at the bottom. Oh well, that's it for today. I hope you liked it, hope you found it useful and we'll see you next time on Enots Engineering. Thank you.